And here it is, the Rayon Digital Everrun. I just got back from Frankfurt where I had a great meeting with Rayon Digital and they were kind enough to give me a, an Everrun. Actually it's a pre-production, so a production sample um, for long-term testing. So thanks to Rayon Digital. The Everrun is not due out until mid-July, not due to be available from resellers until mid-July. But um, what I can do is give you a preview of the device, run through some of the, um, the details. You want to know about the keyboard, you want to know about the HSDPA, you want to know about the SSD. Some of those things I won't be able to tell you about because unfortunately I don't have SSD in this model and I don't have the wireless WAN in this module, in this model. But I have tested the wireless WAN down in Frankfurt this afternoon. You'll want to know about the auto retape function. And you'll want to know about um, the camera and some of the options, the battery life, some of the features of the device. So far, so good. I've had a lot of fun testing it so far. And to be honest, it's an amazing bit of technology. This, I think, is a device that really could shake up the, the um, personal media player market and introduce a a really useful consumer UMPC. Um, you'll see why later. I'll talk about it more on the on the uh, on the blog, on the video, on the uh, portal, and uh, in a while, in a few minutes, I'll just go downstairs and we'll get it under the spotlight and go around it in detail. The Rayon Digital Everun. Okay, then let's uh, take a quick closer look at the Rayon Digital Everon and a decent bit of light here. Um, if you've seen pictures of the Everon you'll know that uh, one of the big features of it is that it does have a keypad on it. This is a full QWERTY keypad uh, in a similar style to something you might find on say a Blackberry or one of the Nokia sort of E61s or similar devices. On the left hand side there's also a function keypad as well. But let's take a look around the device first from the top. On the top um, there are stereo speakers. Sound quality seems to be quite reasonable actually. I was uh, pleasantly surprised with that. And here, uh, because this is a pre-production model, sorry, a production sample, is where the webcam will be. Now it's a strange positioning for the webcam and in fact it won't be a webcam it's going to be simply a camera because this is going to be a, div um, a camera that points this way up when you have the device like this and therefore you're only going to be able to use it um, to take pictures in this axis so it's not going to be a webcam then we've got the usual headphones microphone DC in, that's a 16 volt DC in, and we've got the USB host port as well because this unit can be used as a USB drive. You just plug it into your PC or your laptop, your notebook, and it pops up as a USB drive, which is a great feature, a feature that was on the Rayon Digital v, uh, Vega as well. Normal uh, USB 2 port, and this is a ventilation port that's going to be covered by a grill in the production models. Again, the other speaker. Then you've got four keys here. Um, this first pair is for the power. Let's flip it over. You might be, you can be able to see what it says. It says normal and PS. That's normal and power saving modes for the CPU. Now I'm going to investigate what that actually means. I suspect it, um, it's probably a clock rate cut, but we'll have to see. Then at the end there you've got two buttons. One is for uh, as a multifunction button, for, mainly for audio mute and for locking in combination with other buttons. And here's the resolution change button. Let's flip that back that way again and we'll go down this side. You've got a, let's get that in focus, volume up down switch, which when used in combination with one of the function buttons, let's get that in focus, when used in combination with one of the function buttons, that performs um, screen backlight change as well, so brightness. 
and you've got three uh, LEDs here which are the usual three LEDs you'll see on uh, any PC for disk um, power and standby or disk activity standby I think that the first one is a lock just indicates what status the lock is in and then you've got the power button here flip it over on the other side up the top here we've got four important buttons that are echoed actually underneath the device basically it's alt control shift and a function key now, this is not a function key that you will normally find on any keyboard it actually creates second um, feet, second functions for the function pad so F11 with the function key for example um, changes the f um, whether this is a uh, joypad or uh, mouse control I'll talk about that in a minute Got the lanyard point down here and at the bottom here is where your SIM card goes. Now this this one I have got this one I've got here, this everyone I've got here hasn't got the HSDPA module in. But I'll show you something in a minute that's quite interesting. Um, one word on the uh, 3G feature is that it uh, I tried it out. Uh, Rayon gave me a demo and it supports voice as well. So in theory you can actually use this as a phone. Uh, of course you're more likely to use it with a Bluetooth uh, headset uh, but it's a great feature to have. There's a ventilation port and here's a docking port. Now the docking station is going to come uh, later in the year, another two months I think until the docking port is, is finished. The docking port will enable VGA out, uh, composite and S video, video out. Um, audio and SPDIF audio, so digital audio out, which is going to be unique amongst any UMPC that I know because it's going to enable, for example, pass through of Dolby Digital Signal, which is going to be a first. Um, power, probably USB pass through. I don't know whether the PCI Express or PCI bus is passed through on that, will be interesting to see. And here's a repeat of the four buttons that were on this side. Alt, Control, Shift and Function. And the reason for that is because when you use the device in this mode, the portrait mode, the keys are nicely positioned. If you use in landscape mode, then again you use the, the key set on this side and they're again nicely positioned. Okay, so on this side we've got power switch, so I'm status LEDs and a rocker switch for volume and backlight brightness. So the keyboard, the QWERTY keyboard, the keys are very small, they have a nice feel to them and a, a definite click, you can feel them and you can use them. I I don't like it as much as the, as the keys on the pepper pad because they're slightly smaller and I would say they're about the equivalent size to the ones on the Q1 Ultra. But the, uh, the difference between this and the Q1 Ultra is that this keypad is all together and not split across two halves of, sorry, Split, split across two halves of the device like, like on the Q1 would be. So I think it's actually going to be quicker than the Q1. And the other thing about it is that although it's really meant for use in this mode, when you flip it into landscape mode you can actually use the keys with the right thumb like that. Now if you're only entering the first few letters of a URL that's perfect. It's a really good feature. Up here is a really uh, brand new unique device it's an optical mouse basically I, th uh, I guess it's similar technology to a fingerprint sensor it senses movement across it and translates that into mouse movement now integrated in it is a uh, right mouse key sorry left mouse button which when used in conjunction with the function key over here turns it into a right mouse button and that is really useful now it's not, it's not like Synaptics pointer, but it's, it's lovely to be able to slide up and down that and scroll on uh, web pages. And in fact, if you hold the function key down at the same time and just run your finger over it like that, it performs a scroll up and down. It's really useful. Okay, let's go over to the back of the device now. I want to take the battery off here.